Hello, Mr. Zonker here, and it is finally time to graph inequalities, and that's what this video is about. So, you want to start by graphing the same way you would with a normal equation. Then, the boundary line or curve, where you do graph it, is either going to be dotted or solid. The dotted line is when it's not equal to, the solid line is when it is equal to, basically meaning points on the line count as solutions or they do not. Then you want to shade the area of the graph, the region that represents all solutions to the inequality. We can use test points to confirm that solutions are accurate. Let's move on to an example. Here it says graph the solutions of the given inequality. And for our first example, we've got y is less than negative 2 thirds x plus 2. So let's graph this like we normally would. Uh, in this case, we have a y-intercept at 2. And then we have a negative two-thirds slope, so that's going to be down 2, 1, 2, over 1, 2, 3. So we'll have a, another point right there. Now, notice that this is less than, it does not have the line underneath, meaning we want to use a dotted line, meaning points on this line are not part of the solution. So when we, draw, when we graph this line, I'm going to make it a dotted line or a dashed line and that tells me that uh, none of these points on the on the line will work. So with this line we know that the solutions are either going to be above the line or below the line. Let's use a test point to see which area of the graph works. Uh, and I chose this point negative 3, negative 1. Now we could have chose any point below the graph or above the graph, uh, depending on which area we wanted to test. So, if I substitute in negative 3 for x, negative 1 for y, we'll end up getting negative 1 is less than negative thir 2 thirds times x, negative 3 plus 2, and evaluating that, we will see that negative 1 is less than 4, which is true, meaning that our graph of solutions will be on the same side as our test point, negative 3, negative 1. So to show my solutions, I'm going to shade in my graph the whole area below that line, meaning any points in this region or even areas outside the visible graph will work to make this inequality true. Example 2. Y is greater than or equal to 1 times 2 to the x power. This looks like an exponential, so the y-intercept is at 1. I'll put my first point there, and it looks like my multiplier is 2, which means it's going to be exponential growth, and 1 times 2 is 2. That'll be my next point. 2 times 2 is 4. That would be my next point. And we can see we'd kind of get a general shape of the exponential. This has a underline, which means that the boundary curve or line includes solutions. So I'm going to use a solid line to sketch the general shape of that graph. Again, it's solid because the equal to option uh, still will provide us good solutions. Now we need a test point. And in fact, this time, I'm going to use often what is the easiest te test point to use, 0, 0. And 0 is often a good point to choose because it makes evaluating a little bit easier. So if I substitute that in, 0 for y, 0 for x, we'll have 0 is greater than or equal to 1 times 2 to the 0. 2 to the 0 is 1, which gives us 0 is greater than 1. This is not correct. 0 is less than 1, which means that my test point 0, 0 is not on the side with the solutions. So I know that my graph is going to have solutions above the curve. If we wanted to, we could pick another test point above the region just to confirm that it, it would work. Now it's time for Shading Shortcuts with Mr. Zonker. If you were very observant, you might have noticed that whenever we had the greater than or greater than or equal to sign, it means that we shade up above 
the line or curve. Whenever we have less than or less than or equal to, it means we are going to shade down or below the curve. This only works when we have Y isolated, which is usually how we graph these types of uh, inequalities. So Y is greater than, shade up. Y is less than, shade down. You can always use test points to confirm that your solution will work. As a bonus, we're gonna be taking a look at a system of inequalities, which is basically two or more inequalities that share the same variables. It's just like systems of equations, except using inequality symbols. All solutions must work for each inequality in the system in order for us to count it as a part of our solution. And here we have our third and final example, this system of inequalities, y is greater than 3x minus 4, and y is less than or equal to negative 2x plus 5. Let's start with that first equation. We've got a y-intercept at negative 4, a slope of 3, that's up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1, and the equal to sign is not included, so I'm going to make this a dashed line. Using that shading shortcut, we know y is greater than 3x minus 4, which means everything above this line is going to be shaded. I'm actually going to just do a very light shading with these lines because we still need to take into account our second inequality, which is y is less than or equal to negative 2x plus 5. Graphing that one, we have a y-intercept at 5, a slope of negative 2, which would be down 2 over 1. I'll get another point there, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. This does have the or equal to as a part of the inequality, so this will be a solid line. And using that shading shortcut, it says y is less than or equal to, which means I'm going to shade downward from this line. That would be all this region below the line. So take a look at this graph. We can see that this area up here works for the blue line, but not the red. This region down here works for the red line, but not the blue. This area to the left works for both of the inequalities. So when I go to shade for my final answer, I'm going to shade in this region where both inequalities overlap and points in this region will work for the system. Those are solutions that each individual has in common. Just to confirm our solution, let's try that old reliable test point of zero, zero. Zero, zero lies right in the region we'd expect. So we would expect this to make both of the inequalities true. Trying in the first one, we get zero is greater than three times zero minus four. Evaluating that, we have zero is greater than negative four. Ding, that is true. Trying in our second inequality, we have zero is less than or equal to negative two times zero plus five. Evaluating that, we get zero is a less than or equal to, to five, and zero is indeed less than or equal to five. Ding. So our test point confirms the region we shaded is accurate. All points in this region will solve this system of inequalities. All right, hope this video was helpful.